it's either fast cars, fast motorbikes, <laughs> and fast women. Uh, yeah. <laughs> a leaky Land Rover. I'd never even driven a four-wheel drive before. You were lucky if you get three weeks off work, so we'd do a bit of backpacking. And we found people out there who were spending six months or a year in a country, and we thought we'd like to do that. So what better way of, of travelling than, than actually driving around the world? Yeah, and we were in Argentina once, and we took this little Jeep Safari. <laughs> we hadn't uh, been kicked out no, like Mr Clarkson. Yeah. Yes, um, a Jeep Safari, and we saw Land Rovers in the distance, and we were the back, uh, back Jeep, and I, I sort of said to David, I said, it's quite good, those Land Rover things, look how they work on, go over the ground and the axles, so it sort of put a little seed in our minds, and uh, one of us said, well, we should get one of those Land Rover things, and then the other one sort of said, and we'll drive it around the world, so that, that was really the basis of uh, the decision to do it in a Land Rover. Initially, the, the idea was to head north up to Norway and crack the Arctic Circle, but unfortunately, it was a little bit too cold and expensive. So we just headed yes. south, so down through Spain, crossed into Morocco, then down the west coast of Africa. But what you find is when you overland is that the, the plan can change overnight. Our initial idea was to go down through Burkina Faso, um, Ugidu, and then down into um, Ghana. Um, we eventually went through Sierra Leone, Liberia, and Cote d'Ivoire because we met somebody on a campsite who said, you must go to these countries. And we were a bit apprehensive to start with because you know, Sierra Leone had been in a civil war. And he said, no, you'll be perfectly safe there. In fact, there are, there's no tourists going there. You will love it. And true to his word, we went there and we had an absolutely fantastic time. Yeah, we would say that's almost one of the rules of travelling is that you have to be flexible because not for political reasons, for safety reasons, for logistics reasons of uh, visas and stuff like that so you absolutely have to have a loose plan and and then be prepared to change it at the last minute. On this journey we've been through 66 countries um, everyone has been fascinating each one for its own reasons but the ones that really stand out to us are places like Ethiopia uh, which we expected to be a country of, of, of famine um, historically, but an incredibly green country that has some fantastic history, uh, places like Lalibela, Gondor, Axum, uh, you've got the Simeon Mountains there. Um, and then the other country that absolutely blew us away was Iran. Again, a country that is described by the, the world's press as being the, part of the axis of evil. The people themselves were incredibly friendly, um, just a hunger, they have a thirst for what you think of their country. And we were treated with nothing but respect everywhere we've been. Uh, I'm a lot calmer person now, and I see things through a different eye. Um, we've been through countries, and the one thing we will tell everybody, what we have found from personal experience, is the poorest people in the world will share the most. Um, and that has been an incredibly humbling experience. We, we leave the, the rat race that we have here and we travel the world and we see what other people have or mainly don't have um, and they survive and they thrive and they're happy. Um, and it also makes you appreciate when you get back home exactly what we have here. Our country has problems that, that people talk about. But all in all, uh, you know, it's a fantastic England's place. Good. England we, is a we, fantastic we're country. We're proud to be British, yeah. and that's, uh, that's took us five years away to actually come to that level of understanding of it and what we've actually got here. We love the Lizzie bus. She's a 1998 300 TDI. Land Rover Defender, and we love her. She's got us all the way around the oh, world. Oh, David, that's more. More than I've ever said about you, that, that is. <laughs> um, we would never have the heart to sell her. Um, she's done so much. She's got us all the way around the world, you know, 134,000 miles. Um, I think a lot of people would say that we're actually mildly foolish to even consider this rebuild because it's going to cost us a lot of money. Uh, and we could actually go out with that money and buy probably an equally good vehicle. But um, it's become more than that to us. She, this she's part of the family. Yeah. Well, basically, we as we have the four-door station wagon. Uh, we intend to convert it to a two-door, um, and then instead of having a roof tent on the top, we're actually going to put a pop top, so the whole roof raises, and that gives you the opportunity then of being able to sleep inside the vehicle. At the moment, that is, that is a facility that we don't have, yeah. and that has meant on a number of occasions we've had to book into hotel rooms either when the weather's been too wet too windy or even when the security implications uh, other times if you can park your vehicle up and sleep inside without putting the tent yeah. up um, that is a better option for you so that's what we've learned uh, well our focus is going to be on weight security and um, easy access to things like tools and stuff like that so that's what we we're going to focus on rather than en suites and uh, jacuzzis and well we could have all that sort of stuff now <laughs>
I'd go tomorrow if I could. But unfortunately, we have to rebuild the Land Rover. <laughs> so that's booked in um, probably from February. Um, of 2015 yeah. and we don't want to go through Russia in the snow in the in the winter so it de depends on, entirely on how long that takes if it can be done within the four to six week uh, time frame we're hoping for then we could make it for the summer of 2015 yeah. which uh, would be great news um, we, the sooner we get back on the road the better it'll be we're sort of mourning our old life and that we were looking forward to it we tend to overpack. You, you pack everything for every eventuality. In actual fact, you need nowhere near that much stuff. You only need two pairs of boxer shorts, two pairs of socks, and one pair of jeans, and that'll do you for most of the yeah, world. Yeah, I, I think also we you realise that kit has to have more than one um, one thing that it can do for you. It has to be versatile. The website lizzybus.com, written by myself, so I apologise <laughs> for the bad grammar, but it's got, you know, it's just uh, an explanation of where we've been, what we've done, what we've seen. It's, it's got no agenda, it's just photographs of our travels around the world. We had quite a few problems at the beginning of this journey with internet and internet access. access. We don't uh, carry a sat phone or a smartphone or any of that. We, buy lo we used to buy local sims wherever we could. Um, the changes that have occurred over the five years since we set off is that even now in places like India and uh, Asia and stuff like that, there, are, there is a lot more access to internet and even in backpackers or small hotels and motels. So that became slightly easier, but the beginning of the journey was very difficult trying to uh, register, not register, yeah. trying to monitor or um, what's the other word when you write about it or you help me out I here, don't know. David? Oh, okay, so <laughs> it, it, in, in parts of West Coast Africa, it would take you 30 minutes to yes, get one email. Yeah. So keeping a website up to date when 30 minutes for one email, it was, it was getting very difficult. The technology has moved on as the, has this journey and I think the next time when we go, next time we intend to have um, GoPros, uh, dash cams, uh, all sorts of stuff because um, taking photographs in a lot of the countries we travelled through was a no-go. In fact, we were arrested at one point for having a camera. So I think next time to document our journey in a more uh, video format, a, a, in more video, and to actually broadcast it better to on a daily basis with people, so they sort of because they become more interested in what we're up to and what we're about, and they can see that if we've done it, they can do it.